Hi, I'm JC Pohl with Teen Truth, sitting here with uh, uh, LMFT supervisor and LPC supervisor, Brittany Neese. You know, one of the things that we really like to do in these videos is just take you to behind the scenes and give you expert information to help you with whatever kind of situation you might be dealing with on campus. So Brittany, why don't you just tell us real quickly, like a little bit about your background and some of the things that you've done in your career. Sure, um, I'd love to. I um, have worked a lot with uh, family systems um, and grief and loss in particular. And so um, really being able to help the entire family communicate better, kind of learning what each other needs, especially when those needs are different. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my experience is, is around that area. Okay, so kind of getting different parts of the family to communicate better together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and one thing that Brittany didn't mention is you, you were actually the clinical director at the Austin uh, Center for Grief and Loss. Yes. Um, so she has a ton of experience around grief and loss. And one of the things in your career is you've done a lot of work in schools. When schools, you know, maybe lose a student to suicide, mm -hmm. uh, you're one of the first people they call to bring in to help with counseling programs or just help with general therapy. Um, so one of the things I really want to ask you today is, um, you know, some of our schools have lost students to suicide. So what what is something that a school should do? Like, what are the top three things a school should do you know, after a student dies by suicide? It's a great question, JC. And I think it's such a sticky subject. Um, I think the worst thing a school can do is not address it. Um, a lot of times parents or even, you know, faculty are concerned about um, glorifying maybe the cause of death or even um, just making students uncomfortable. Yeah, they're kind of afraid of it. <laughs> yes, yeah. but the reality is this happens. This is life. and. It's, a, it's actually a good opportunity for us to model what, what grief is like, um, to model what to do when these kind of situations occur. Um, it's also really important to try and destigmatize suicide by really honoring that student as a person. Um, so sometimes uh, students or even you know school faculty will want to do a remembering ritual or something to honor mm -hmm. that student. That's really healthy and a really important way of honoring that student's life. Um, the other message you really want to get across is that we don't want anyone to die this way. It doesn't right. have to happen. Yeah, you are loved here. You are cared for. We don't. We don't want you to die by suicide right. on yes. our campus. Yes, and so it's it's the perfect opportunity mm -hmm. actually to really address this serious issue mm -hmm. and talk about how these students can get help if they're feeling mm -hmm. in any way like they want mm -hmm. to hurt themselves or kill themselves. And when you say get help, like what are the things that come to mind for you? Like an administrator might be watching this right now. Okay, well. How do they get help? What does that mean? Like, right. What does that mean to you? What are, the, what are the key things that they should be saying to students? Well, I think absolutely checking in um, with students just around, um, not just when things are good, but um, also trying to create an open space for that dialogue without judgment. Mm -hmm. A lot of times these students feel either critiqued or you know that they're going to be lectured or, mm -hmm. or judged. So a lot of students kind of hide those um, difficult feelings. So mm -hmm. really checking in with them about mm -hmm. what do you do mm -hmm. when you're upset? What do you do if you're being bullied mm -hmm. or if you know, you're being treated unfairly mm -hmm. and that is really overwhelming for you? Mm -hmm. um, really just setting the groundwork that we, we all have times mm -hmm. in our lives where we might feel that way. So what I kind of hear you saying is like really work with them on coping skills and strengths. Um, yes, and kind of getting out in front of the issue a little bit. Right, and especially encouraging them to, to have face-to-face -face conversations. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's a lot of what we're missing now is that, um, you know, a lot of these teens are communicating mostly via social media or, yeah. you know, their electronics. Message, yeah. And so... Yeah you don't really get the sense of how they're doing on an emotional level a lot of the time. So really encouraging them and inviting them to have those in-person conversations. Yeah, so I like that. So getting help is about getting face-to-face -face relationships going. Yes. And also um, just getting kids to think about their coping skills or their strengths to kind of get out in front of it, kind of build that resiliency. So when they have those negative thoughts, they can hopefully work through it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can be vulnerable as well with them and talk about, you know, our experiences of being embarrassed or being, you know, um, a broken relationship or things yeah. like that that might be going on so that they know too yeah. that it, it's okay. Well, and that's one thing, maybe the last question I'll ask you um, is like, you used the word destigmatize. Like, can you tell us a little bit more about what that means to you, like, as a therapist, as a counselor? Like, um, obviously, we all kind of know the definition of it, but but how does that play out on campus? What does that mean to you? What's the value of destigmatizing suicide? I think when we can make it be more okay to talk about, more kids are going to talk about it. If we don't treat it as this um, 
kind of secret we have to push it to the side or pretend like that doesn't exist or it doesn't happen or when it does happen you know everyone is, is scared to talk about it if we can just be open and honest about how we might have experiences right. that get us to that point right. and what do we do when we get there yeah i mean i think it was i was just at a school up in burke Burnett, up in north texas and uh, one of the kids came up to me after the assembly and that's exactly what she said she's like everybody thinks about suicide everyone on this campus has thought about it at some point but nobody will talk about it right. so what you're really saying is just kind of break down those walls break down those barriers and let kids know that hey if you're feeling this way you're not alone right that other and- people feel this way other kids feel this way and it's actually somewhat normal yeah, for a teenager well, to maybe of course and talking about it does not mean it's going to happen or it doesn't mean they're going to do that right. i think sometimes we have this fear that we'll plant the mm-hmm. seed mm-hmm. that's not true mm-hmm. talking about it is one of the best ways to be able to to make that be less um afraid and hopefully less likely yeah to i really like that. that's powerful i i wish more kids could hear that talking about it doesn't mean you're going to do it. Right. And that, that's, a, that's a big thing to kind of take away. Well, Brittany, it's been a great conversation here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I hope this information is helpful for you. Um, if you want to get connected with Brittany, I'm happy to connect you with her. Otherwise, you can find more about our programs and what we might be able to offer to help you at teentruth.net. Or, of course, connect with us on social media, on Facebook, and all that kind of fun stuff. So, Brittany, I want to thank you for the time and thank hope you. you all enjoyed the video.